King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of peace, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of peace, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of peace, glory, Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Alleluia. 
Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus as Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. King of kings as Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus as Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. Jesus, 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 Prince of Peace, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Prince of peace, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Prince of peace, glory, Alleluia. King of kings and Prince of peace, glory. Alleluia, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, 
to our second service from the Manx Kitchen. It's Palm Sunday. I'm Jo Rand, I'm the Methodist minister based here in Grange Over Sands. And uh, we as a household are broadcasting this service live for Grange and for the South Lake Circuit and for anyone else who cares to join us. Um, whoever you are and wherever you are, you're very welcome. Uh, do say hello in the comments if you haven't already. It's great to see everyone joining us. Uh, we're hoping we've got the sound working a bit better this week. We did have a crazy echo earlier on, but we think that's sorted. But let us know if there are any problems and we'll try and sort them out. Well, our first song this morning is a post-church favourite. It's You Are In The City. It's based on Psalm 139 and it reminds us that wherever we are, God is there too. I'm just going to run through the actions. So the first verse... Um, says, you are in the city. Those are buildings, child walks. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> you are in the country. I think those are supposed to be trees. Yeah, the trees. Yeah. You are in, in the, the hills. hills and you, you are, are in, in the valleys. And when we say you are, it's like that. You oh, you are, are, yes. You are in, in the city. city. You, you are, are in the country, country. like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think, oh yes. When I was looking up the chords for this, we found out that the words we normally sing for the kind of chorus bit at Toast Church aren't really quite, quiet, um, aren't really quite the proper um, words. Uh, we're going to sing the proper words today. We thought for copyright reasons we'd better do it right. Um, so if you, if you come to Toast Church normally, it might catch you out. So the chorus goes, oh, oh, where can I run away to? Oh, oh, I cannot escape you. Oh, oh, even in the darkness. Oh, oh, I can never hide from you. So hopefully we'll manage that. We ready? We're just going to sing the first verse and the chorus for now. Thank you. 
but now we're getting the hang of that. The, the second verse goes, you're in the traffic, you're in the quiet, you're in the shadows. Yeah, shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right, you're in the shadows, you are in the spotlight. Um, we're going to sing the whole thing in a minute, but one of the things that we often do at Toast Church is make up our own extra verses often on the themes of whatever we're thinking about at the time. So we have sung in the past, we've sung, you're in the jungle, you're in the Arctic, you're in the floodplain, you're in the desert. Um, I don't know if we can remember any of the other verses, but where is God in this time of lockdown? I wonder if you've got any suggestions. If you'd like to suggest a place where you found God or where you think God might be in this time that we're experiencing at the moment, please do add it into the comments while we sing. We're going to sing um, the whole thing again and then we'll have a look at the suggestions and see uh, see what we can we come up with as a sing, third verse. Are we going to sing it? Are we going to sing that verse? Yeah. Um, we're going to sing with some gaps so that people at home oh, yeah, can right. fill in whatever words they want to sing. Okay, right. So, from the top again, yeah? suggestions at home so we're going to sing a third verse but we will sing you are in the mm -mm, and you can fill in whatever you like whatever you think are the best uh, suggestions your suggestions or whatever your favorites are so we're ready
to Paul, who's going to lead our prayers for us this morning. Good morning. And first of all, sorry that uh, the PowerPoint didn't work quite right there. I was too busy looking at all your wonderful comments about where God is with us this morning. So let's come to God in prayer. Powerful, invisible, incredible God, you're everywhere. You are everywhere with us, with each one of us, wherever, wherever we are this morning. We thank you that you are with us. You're with us in the kitchen here. You're with us in our studies. You are with us on Facebook. You're with us in the garden. You are with us in our creativity. You are with those in hospitals. You are with us in the quietness. You're in the rainbows and all the wonders of creativity. You are in the silence. You are in all those who work together in the NHS and in the police and in all those different services. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us wherever we are, whatever we're doing, and you are also with all those who we know, all those who we love, all those who we care about, even though we can't be together this morning. And let's just take a moment to reflect back over the last few days, where we've been, what we've done, where we would have liked to have been. And we recognise there are times when perhaps we have tried to hide from you, God. Times maybe when we've even tried to run away. Or maybe times when we've just not recognised that you are with us. We bring those and all the times of this past week to you now. Our powerful, invisible, incredible God who is everywhere. And let's join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have our reading in a moment from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, this morning, we have a cast of thousands to tell us the Palm Sunday, well, maybe not thousands, Palm Sunday story. Um, as we're, uh, well, I was going to say, as we're getting a bit more accustomed to using the technology, we're getting a bit more adventurous. But if you saw the stress in the kitchen before we went live this morning, you might not think that we're feeling that more comfortable with the technology as we go on. Um, but I want to say thank you to all of you who have sent us video clips for this reading. Amos has been working really hard, well, and Paul. Amos has been working really hard to put them all together. And I really hope The you, whole of yesterday. The whole of yesterday. It was the whole of yesterday. Thank you, Amos. Um, we really hope that you enjoy it. Matthew 21. The reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11, entitled The Triumphal Entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, he will send them right away. 
This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? 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 The crowds answered. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. We're now going to sing, "Ye servants of God." So I wonder if you've been part of the wave of cheers and clapping across the country on Thursday nights, celebrating all our healthcare workers, people who are taking risks and making such a sacrifice to care for others. I, I suppose I should admit I'm perhaps a bit of a reluctant convert to joining in with all of that, um, but I was dragged out by my family and my neighbours it's not that I'm not thankful. It's not that I'm not in awe of what people are doing. Of course I am. Um, but I suppose in my head, I'm it's sort of thinking, what difference will it really make to go out and cheer? Will it really help anybody? But actually, 
it's a great thing to stand together as a community alongside our, alongside our neighbours, at a safe distance of course, and to celebrate together um, the work of those who are doing and giving so much. I hope you enjoyed our virtual crowd gathering to cheer for Jesus. I wonder what it would have felt like to be in the midst of that crowd, lining the streets and cheering to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. I should imagine there was a real sense of excitement and determination and hope around in that crowd. This particular city of Jerusalem has seen many invading armies and kings come crashing through its gates to take control of life in the city and in the country. Jesus, though, is the opposite of all of these. He doesn't come riding in on a war horse flanked by soldiers. In contemporary terms, it's not a cavalcade of armoured cars with um, armed bodyguards beside him. He comes in with crowds of ordinary people riding a borrowed donkey. It wasn't even his donkey. I guess today's equivalent might be a new prime minister riding to Downing Street on a borrowed bicycle or maybe a battered old transit van. I don't know. But whatever it was, um, the people loved it. This was the fulfilment of the promise of the prophet Zechariah, the coming of the king riding a donkey. Those verses in Zechariah that are quoted in the reading go on to say, here is the one who will get rid of the chariots and the war horses and the battle bows. This is the one who will bring peace, peace at last. But perhaps the crowd didn't really realise that day what it was going to cost to continue on this path of peace. With every miracle, the hope had been building. Jesus had been doing amazing things and teaching amazing things. But he'd also been trying to prepare his followers for what was coming. The moment Peter recognises Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, God's anointed one, Jesus tells them that he's going to be put to death. A little while later, on a mountain, Jesus is praying with some of his friends and he is lit up and shining with God's glory. And then they come down from the mountain and he heals a sick boy. But then again, he tells the disciples about his death which is coming. Some people bring their children to Jesus, but the disciples send them away. And Jesus has to teach his friends about what greatness really is. And he tells them again that he's going to be handed over and put to death. And then two of Jesus' disciples ask for the places of honour in Jesus' kingdom to sit at his right and his left. And Jesus has to explain again that greatness is not about positions of power, but about service and self-giving. And so they arrive here at Jerusalem at Passover time, Passover the festival celebrating freedom from slavery in Egypt. And Jesus makes this powerful political statement, arriving as the promised king, the one who was going to bring freedom. It's no wonder that the city was shaken by it all. Who is this? Who is this? But the power Jesus has is not military might, but gentleness and servanthood and humility. The crowd that day didn't know where all of this was going, but the clues are there. Riding in on a donkey is a determined statement of peace, but it's a different sort of peace from what people knew at the time. The, people, the peace that people were used to what was what was known as the Pax Romana, Roman peace. Peace brought 
through military force, through power and control to shut down any dissent. But that wasn't what came riding in on a donkey. The peace Jesus brought started from within himself. Jesus was at peace with himself and with his own identity. The city asks, who is this? And that is a really good question. Who is this Jesus? The crowd cheer him as a hero and they say he's a prophet. But that's only a glimpse of the fuller truth. Jesus didn't need to prove his strength, at least not in that sort of way. Jesus' strength would take him through suffering, through self-sacrifice and even through death. How do you defeat, how do you truly defeat weapons of war? Well, Jesus chose not to use them. That's how he defeated those weapons. That's a determined statement of peace, to be so non-violent, to be so willing to put your own need for self-preservation to one side. To do that takes courage. But this is how the kingdom of peace comes into being, starting from within one person. And I think of the challenges that we face at the moment our human desire to put ourselves first is strong. We've seen that all around us, whether that's on the national scale of trying to buy up medical equipment and ventilators and protective clothing before other countries do, or whether it's on that personal level of the scramble to buy the toilet roll or the chopped tomatoes or the flour or whatever it is we want before someone else does. Each of those actions is in its own way a statement that I'm more important, my own needs take priority over others. But we're also seeing at the same time so many examples of those who are living the way of Christ, whether that's what they'd call it or not. Those who look out for the needs of others, those who put the needs of others before their own needs whether that's through leaving that last pack of toilet roll for the next person because you know you've got one or two rolls left at home, or whether it's by directly facing the risks of working on a hospital ward despite the chances of infection, or whether it's simply by staying at home on a sunny weekend to lessen the risk that we might put others in danger. For some people, that path of putting others first will be and is a very hard one. For others, the sacrifice that's asked of us is very much less. But each one of us, whatever our situation, each one of us may choose to serve ourselves or to walk the way of Christ. But Whatever it means for us, we are not asked to go anywhere that Jesus does not walk with us. And I'm going to finish by reading um, one of our other readings for today, which is from uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. Your life in Christ makes you strong, and his love comforts you. You have fellowship with the Spirit, and you have kindness and compassion for one another. I urge you then to make me completely happy by having the same thoughts, sharing the same love, and being one in soul and mind. Don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be humble towards one another always considering others better than yourselves. And look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, 
but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honour of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not an easy thing to be asked to do, but the strength to do all of these things comes from God working in us. So let's ask for God's help as we sing our next hymn, Give Me Joy in My Heart, Keep Me Praising. And so let's bring our prayers to God. And as we heard in that reading, through Jesus' love, we are, we, we are one, we are united. And so I invite you, when I say sharing in your love, wherever you are, please join me in saying, make us one. Sharing in your love, make, make us, us one. one. Jesus our Lord and our God. When you walked this earth, you could have ruled supreme over all, but you did not think that by force you should try to remain equal with God. We pray for our leaders. 
for those with power and influence and those who would like to be in charge. Show them all your wisdom and your way of humility. Help them to make right decisions, looking out for the interests of others, not for themselves. Sharing in your love, make us one. Jesus, of your own free will, you gave up all that you had, taking on the nature of a servant. We thank you for all who are risking much to serve others at this time. We pray for their health and safekeeping and for the health and safekeeping of their families. For hospital workers, for carers in care homes and in the community, for the many who are continuing their daily work and for those who have had to give up their work. Sharing in your love, make us one. Jesus, you became a human being. You know what it is like to be like us and to know suffering. We pray for all who are suffering now, for those who are unwell, either in hospital or at home whether with the coronavirus or with other illnesses. We pray for those who are struggling with loneliness and those who are trapped in abusive or challenging home situations. Sharing in your love, make Amen. us one. Jesus, you walked the path to death. We remember now those who have died and we pray for those left behind, particularly those who are having to say goodbye in very quiet funerals this week and for those for whom even this is impossible. Sharing in your love, make Amen. us one. Jesus, you have been raised up by God to the highest place. And so we kneel before you. We offer you ourselves. Help us to follow in your ways. Amen. So we've celebrated today that um, joyful entry into Jerusalem, but we've also remembered that the path ahead of Jesus was a difficult one. Next Sunday, we know that it's Easter Day. We're not going to be able to celebrate as we normally would, but perhaps we can find new meaning in the difficult path Jesus walked to the cross through death and beyond death into life. If you want to join us, join with us this week in exploring how that journey challenges us today, we'll be broadcasting live for Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. We're also offering two shorter acts of worship on Good Friday at noon and at 3 p.m., the times that the Gospels say Jesus was crucified and the time that he died. And then we'll be here again at 10.30 on Easter morning to celebrate Resurrection Hope. In that service, we'll be thinking about some of the signs of hope that we see around us. And so we'd like to invite you to send us a few seconds of video of something that you've seen or heard that gives you a sense of hope 
perhaps that's in your home or your garden or maybe um, if you're getting out for some exercise there'll be a chance to just record just a few seconds and we'll compile those together to share in the service we'll put a post on Facebook with some more details of that we'd love to have contributions not just from the Grange congregation but from anyone who's joining us so that's next week uh, we're going to sing our final hymn now we will walk with God my brothers, we will walk with God. this holy week may we walk with God and in our joys and our sorrows and in the challenges and choices we face may we know that God walks with us and may the blessing of God Father Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and always Amen Amen Shadows you are in the spotlight of